what's up, Sliders and Fox here. I'm gonna bring you some Civilization 5. And, um, you're wondering, well, probably not wondering now, but anyway, um, this is record, um, commentary is added after the recording. I had a lot of stuff I was doing while I was playing this, so, couldn't, the recording, I'm not gonna commentate. It's gonna set the earth and we're gonna set the victory condition to domination, culture, and diplomatic. And we should. We're gonna be playing as the Romans because the Romans are just that awesome. And yeah, I have to reset the victory types or conditions, whatever you want to call them. And I'm going to change the name here to Romulus. Just, he's the true founder of Rome, I guess you'd say, from what we know. Well, from what legend says, I guess. He's the founder of Rome. So I'm going to change it to the Roman Republic. And, yeah, Civ 5. Pretty good game, in my opinion. different from your usual Total War games and Paradox games that I usually play. But yeah, so now we're... <laughs> yeah, so I botched that up. But we're about to be set. Oh wait, listen to this. The blessings of the gods be upon you, Caesar Augustus, Emperor of Rome, and all her holdings. Your empire was the greatest and longest lived of all in Western civilization. And your people single-handedly have shaped its culture, law, art, and warfare like none other, before or since. Through years of glorious conquest, Rome came to dominate all the lands of the Mediterranean, from Spain in the west to Syria in the east, and her dominion would eventually expand to cover much of England and northern Germany. Roman art and architecture still awe and inspire the world, and she remains the envy of all lesser civilizations who have followed. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Change to the game. Change to this desolate world. So we're gonna set up in a heavily forested area. We're gonna explore some ruins here. Get our men up to spearmen. Better hold their own. Yes, and yeah. Found Rome and conveniently in between two rivers and a bunch of jungle and with mountain defenses around it. You know. Figured researching animal husbandry would be the best. You can trap animals and stuff better, helps your income, I guess. I'm not too familiar with uh, Civ 5, so I could be completely wrong. But I could also be right. And but I'm more than likely wrong. But anyway, it's going to be a slow start here. You can see it's 39 and it's 3960 BC. And our soldiers are already campaigning outside of our borders. But yeah, I want to build some scouts to go scout out the surrounding land. See who, see what barbarians might inhabit these treacherous territories. Good to know there's some cows roaming right outside of a bunch of jungles. But notice we only have one person in Rome, or one total citizen, but we're training scouts which have about five people, and um, we have soldiers about, what, four, eight, twelve? People, so 
I guess we're taking in random barbarian tribes hiding out in the woods and assimilating them into our fighting force. Our one brave warrior <laughs> sitting in Rome. Yeah, we're gonna continue to scout out here 3800 BC. Let's see, we're gaining 7 gold a turn. Other than that, it's real slow th moving through these forests. And you can see, yeah, we're, sur we're almost, see we're starting to be like surrounded by mountain ranges, which I guess is good for protection purposes. But also make expanding much harder. And yeah, mm. not sure why. I paused for a minute. I think I had to go do something. I don't know why I didn't cut this out. But anyways, yeah, you can see my f six scouts standing there, moving through the jungle, probably enslaving more people to be assimilated into the workforce. I guess. More barbarians hiding out into the woods. But, you know, we're gonna start building some workers. Start cutting down these forests. And then we're gonna explore some more. And, and what do you know? More trees and more mountains. Uh, that then it comes as a surprise. But yeah, Rome has grown to two citizens. How one citizen produced a second citizen, I have no idea. Maybe he found a woman slave. <laughs> but anyway. So, anyway, um, I have a story for you guys. Probably not that interesting, but whatever. Um, a couple of days ago, we were talking around history class. Um, let me just say, um, in our history class, it's supposed to be an honors class, but the the students in the history class are pretty, well, stupid in my well, not stupid, but they don't know. Like they're uh, not as like they don't know much about history at all. Let's put, it, let's put it that way. But anyway, um, no one likes the teacher, and I, and that, that includes me. Your teacher's kind of like, she thinks she knows it all when, but anyway, beside the point. But anyway, she was, someone asked, um, why she, she was talking about Britain having, like, being ruled by the king, and it was like 1940, and the king was making decisions and something and someone asked like isn't there a parliament which well there was she wasn't she then so I said there's like a parliament and since 1100 and that just I, I, I just silently um picked up my book and when she wasn't looking I basically just banged my head against the book for about five minutes while she went on rambling about England having England and the king and yeah and all that stuff but yeah it's uh, it's pr pretty funny though she thinks she uh, she thinks she's given this big education thing to all these people and she's basically teaching them to teaching them stuff that is completely wrong about history but yeah but spring break comes but um officially on Thursday I think we Thursday or Friday we officially start spring break so yay uh we go on some vacation maybe Back to the game. See, we're exploring. 
We discovered some ruins here. Gonna go check it out. But, yeah, it's a lot of forest jungles. But, still know where we are. See some, a lot of gold there. We're up to 224 gold. We're almost done. Oh, we're half, almost halfway done researching the wheel. And who doesn't like the wheel? Geico cave and guy likes to boast about that. I wonder what happened to the show they made about him. I remember a couple of years back they made a show about the Geico caveman guy. That, I think it failed after like two or three episodes. I remember seeing advertised commercials for it. But, and then never saw anything about it. Hey. We discovered Monaco and found survivors in ruins that are of course going to be enslaved and sent to Rome as our workers. I decided, I know what, Rome's fairly new, uh, maybe, we sh we, maybe we should make friends with these new neighbors and g give them some gold to show that R Rome, Rome appreciates its new neighbors and Rome wants to be friends. And they happily accept. But we all know Rome just keeps its promises. Just waiting for the perfect time to strike. But see, now we're gonna adopt a policy on um, knowing the Romans. We are going to adopt honor. Good honors. So we're gonna have an effective military force, and apparently that allows us to discover a barbarian encampment. Who would have thought? Honor allows you to discover random barbarian places. But yeah, let's see, we're almost done researching the wheel. Not gonna do much good, I guess, through a jungle. And at this point, I still have. Well, it should have been. It should have been fairly obvious to me where we were, but at this point I was still completely clueless to where in the world we were, but see now it seems like we're in South America and like, I guess you can say Brazil? Yeah, like towards the edge of Brazil. I don't know. Yuri will probably correct me on where exactly we are. I think he lives where? I can, if I actually show it. Yeah, he lives somewhere along the Brazilian coast. But whatever. Yeah, he'll probably tell me where in Brazil this is. Or if this is in Brazil. I could be completely wrong. At least I'm not like most Americans with geography. Remember, last, our last, our history teacher last year, um, and she all, she said for the past few years she's been having geography tests on the U.S. states where we had to fill in where where each state was located. And she said she started that because when she was giving her lesson on the United States states and stuff about United States, um, someone asked her where, what country, I mean, what continent, um, no, where in Europe, Michigan, Michigan was, and yeah. Michigan, it's not in Europe. I mean, pretty sure Europeans can confirm that. But, anyway, back to the game. See, yeah, we like. Well, it seems like our people do not like shiny things. Uh, uh, 
it seems like the Romans are not living their life in luxury and living their life in modesty instead. But we don't have bronze working yet, so we can't cut down these forests and start massive deforestation of the Brazilian jungle before 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 the people five thousand years from now decide to start deforesting areas. Oh no. Our our workers are unemployed. It seems like unemployment problems ran around ran rampant in ancient Rome as well. We have Poor workers. workers. But have not they just have to sit there, not get paid, not being able to feed the family, and just standing in a random open field. Yeah, it's time to get rid of these unwashed barbarians in their encampment. See, they're able to hold us off the first time, but but not gonna be able to hold us off twice. See their bag of loot. We want that loot. Units is near an enemy unit. Uh, but th but th there's more barbarians. I thought they'd pull a fast one on us. Sneak troops are behind us, but thanks to our magnificent flanking, flanking maneuver, we were able to discover their reinforcements and plan a grasp on them. Yep. Monaco's kind of like, screw you, you gave us money. We were friends with you long enough. And we know when people turn on Rome, but people don't live to tell the tale. Yeah, time to finish off the barbarians. They put up a decent fight for barbarians. And that one poor lonely guy is just standing there in the face of a barbarian horde about to attack him. So luckily. These scouts are gonna risk their lives for that one guy and attack the barbarian encampment, and they're actually gonna do a decent amount of damage to them, which was surprising to me at least. And yeah, Monaco said, just said basically, screw you, Rome. Ooh, we got what we want out of you. And the barbarians think, think these scouts are some are weak and charge prematurely and well yeah the the scouts are brave they held their ground that one guy is gonna be go, go down in history and remembered as a hero as a Roman hero the one guy that saved Rome from the unwashed barbarians at her gate but yay, now we can mine. And we're about to figure out how to work with bronze. So yay for Roman engineering. See, it's bustling with a total of four citizens. It seems like that's a, that city's overcrowded so overcrowded. I mean, how, how can four citizens get on with their life? But, anyway. Yeah, just end turns. Here, we're still scouting around. You can see it's like a big massive rock or mountain wall. Clear a marsh once we get technology to Meanwhile, our men are camping here at the river, planning their intricate invasion of the treacherous state of Monaco. But um, until they get enough troops, the, the Romans know not to attack prematurely. And knowing the Romans, they're prob we're probably planning some intricate maneuver to take the monikins 
with minimal casualties, but our plans are going to be in interrupted because we have word that more unwashed barbarians are, are, are asking for us, are challenging us to come and destroy them, th thinking that th they can out muscle the Roman Republic, the might of Rome. And they're going to accept the challenge for us to come to their encampment and face them on their turf. And us being Romans, we're not backing down from a challenge. And we're going to teach these barbarians what's what. Be because that's what Romans do. Been killing barbarians. To be on your slogan, killing barbarians since 3000 BC. Got our little bridgehead over here with the scouts. Making sure the Monicans don't try to pull a fast one on us. And. Yeah. to advance over here. Almost done bronze working. See it's 2520 BC or, or 2520 BC and the Romans are about to take on these unwashed barbarians with their towns lit on a fire and their people begging to be liberated and assimilated into Roman culture and Roman rule. Then the we the scouts move on and meet up with the with the people of Kuala Lumpur and they generously give us gold. And yeah. So the, the generous people of Kuala Lumpur will be thanked and we will not move through their territory due to their generosity. Meanwhile in the north, um, barbarians are doing a good job holding back our first assault on the on their hilltop encampment. But that can only hold out for so long. So now we have bronze working. And all that bronze working. We're going to research some masonry because we want to build some walls, some pyramids, clear some marshes. And we, we want to make sure that the barbarians that come to our culture willingly know, know how awesome they are. Yeah, accidentally. Trespassed on Kuala Lumpur, but uh, we're, we're Romans. We can do whatever we want. We don't follow petty borders. I mean, if we did, we wouldn't be miles and miles and miles outside of our own border. But, yep, we're gonna start killing the environment, cutting down the jungle. Seeing if we can meet any new peoples down south. And we are still completely surrounded by a mountain and water. But outside Rome, see our dutiful and loyal workers working hard. And someone added to the class glare before us. But Rome always catches up. Still trying to explore further, and see there's a little nation, there is a nation down there, we don't know what it is yet, but we will in about a m next turn, and yeah, there we go.
Another person has been the class color, but Rome, Rome will catch up. Doesn't have to be the first to enter as long as it's the best when it gets there. And here we met, meet this guy in a tunic and a right robe and with glasses on. He calls himself Gandhi and speaks this foreign language. And he, do, he doesn't want to accept the alliance with us. You can see he's already heavily developed. They have these new things called farms. I, th I think we're gonna we're gonna try to steal their idea, and make farms of our own. F first, we gotta deal with these. Um, deal with our military might, and well, yeah. So we're gonna build some spearmen, recruit them from the four citizens of Rome will m magically appear eight spearmen will bolster our military yeah see we're flowing in gold so now who likes shiny things the most and uh, yeah well, we're not we as much as we know we're superior to these to this Gandhi, we're not in a, a position right now. Trespass on our land. We're, we're hoping diplomacy will win the day for a change instead of pure military might. We want to give our people a chance to come to come to our ways and come over to the good side, the winning side, the Roman side. Uh, yeah, Rome demands gems, so these five people actually want to start living luxuri luxuriously, and they want some rubies and diamonds, and of course we get that through cutting down tons of trees and rooting out the areas where these rubies and diamonds exist, see our men are already securing some precious gems outside of our territory so no one else takes them but yeah we're completely surrounded by mountains and that's one thing Romans can't conquer is mother nature anything else we can conquer and eventually we will conquer mother nature Yep, and our men are gonna retreat from the borders. Although we don't, we don't like to honor border disputes. Um, apparently, um, Gandhi does find borders important, and so we don't want to start a war with him yet. Because who wants to start a war unprepared? Even even us, the Romans aren't prepared all the time. But that that wraps it up for this part. I'll be right back with some more commentary. And this is Silas Fox signing off, and I'll see you shortly with a continuation of what's going on. Bye.